Guess what, Carol? Scott's finally landed a job. He's going to be making enough to support us now. We won't be needing your help anymore. You're free to do whatever you want. Really? Did Scott get a job? That's fantastic news. I was starting to worry he'd never find his footing. It's been two years since he graduated and he hasn't done much since then. It would have been such a waste if he just spent his day loafing around, surfing the net. This is a great step forward. I hope he can put his education to good use and find something he truly enjoys. He's still young. There's so much for him to explore. Where did he land the job? There's no need to be so harsh on your brother Carol. Harsh? I'm just being honest. I want what's best for him and that doesn't include lazing around at home while I foot the bills and you do all the housework. He needs this job. Can't you just be happy for him, Carol? I don't understand why you're so indifferent. He worked hard in college and he deserved some time off before diving into work. You didn't even go to college, remember? So don't act so superior. Is that how you remember it, Mom? That I didn't go to college because I couldn't or didn't want to? The truth is, I wanted to go desperately. But no one would pay my tuition or consign a student loan for me. And the money I saved from a part-time job had to go towards bills because you insisted that I contribute. So yes, I've been working since high school and all my earnings have gone into this house. And now you're belittling me for being a high school graduate? And what if I did stop you? You wouldn't have graduated like Scott did anyway. It would have been a waste of money to send you. You should be grateful that I saved you for four years of your life. Grateful for being forced into a job right after high school because you wouldn't help me with college fees? For having to give up my dreams and aspirations? You're not as special as you think you are, Carol. Even with just a high school education, why can't you accept that you're not as smart or skilled as you think? For the past 10 years, I've been contributing $2,000 every month to this household. After all the sacrifices I've made, don't you think I deserve a little gratitude? Gratitude? For what exactly? I think you'll have to remind me what I'm supposed to feel grateful for. When I first started working, my salary wasn't much. But I knew I had to strive harder so we could afford the things we wanted. So I worked my way up, and after a few years, I finally got a raise. Since then, I've been covering almost all our expenses every month. For 10 years, I've sacrificed my personal wants and needs, never complaining even when I couldn't buy the clothes I wanted or go on vacations with friends. Now that I'm earning a bit more, I can finally save a little for myself. But even, that does not much, considering 95% of my salary goes towards this house. And yet, you don't seem to appreciate the sacrifices I've made. Doesn't that bother you at all? No, Carol, I don't understand what you want from me. Isn't it natural for you to take care of your family? You're making a big fuss over such a small amount of money. Besides, you should be grateful that you're still living in this house. You are an adult now. You should be living on your own or getting married. Mom, I am grateful. That's why I've been paying for everything. Then stop backing so high and mighty over $2,000. You owe me for giving birth to you. So don't expect me to thank you. You don't have to make such a big deal out of it, Mom. Anyway, I have to get back to work now. Oh, and by the way, I'll be going on a business trip next week.
a business trip with your measly salary? And here you are working for a company that overworks and underpays you. Why don't you find a better job, one that pays more? At this rate, you'll end up old and alone without ever becoming independent or starting your own family. Mom, do you really have to belittle my choices like that? I don't regret focusing on my career and enjoying my job right now. And when the time is right, I'll find someone. There's no rush. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have work to do. Several hours later. Hey Carol, can you lend me some money again? Scott, I can't lend you any more money this month. You've been asking me for money quite a lot recently. You need to start managing your own finances. I heard you got a job, so there's no excuse now. It's a good opportunity for you to learn how to budget and use your desires as motivation to work harder. Unlike mom, I won't be able to support you forever. You need to start being more independent. Geez, Carol, you sound like an old lady. I just got a job, but it doesn't pay much. I mainly took it to get away from mom and spend more time outside the house. Regardless, it's good that you're working now. Mom won't bother you as much and you'll have your own income. You could even consider moving out if you wanted to. Mom tends to be overprotective of you, but I think it's time for you to learn how to take care of yourself. Haha, <laughs> imagine mom's reaction if I told her I wanted to move out. By the way, why are we moving all of a sudden? What? Are we moving? This is the first I've heard about it. Mom didn't tell me why. All she said was that she found a better place. But I don't get why we're moving next week. Plus, my part-time job is closer to the address we have now, so I wish you had warned me before deciding. And did you say part-time job? 1. Scott, I can't lend you any more money this month. You've been asking me for money quite a lot recently. You need to start managing your own finances. I heard you got a job, so there's no excuse now. It's a good opportunity for you to learn how to budget and use your desires as motivation to work harder. Unlike mom, I won't be able to support you forever. You need to start being more independent. Geez, Carol, you sound like an old lady. I just got a job, but it doesn't pay much. I mainly took it to get away from mom and spend more time outside the house. Regardless, it's good that you're working now. Mom won't bother you as much and you'll have your own income. You could even consider moving out if you wanted to. Mom tends to be overprotective of you, but I think it's time for you to learn how to take care of yourself. Haha, <laughs> imagine mom's reaction if I told her I wanted to move out. By the way, why are we moving all of a sudden? What? Are we moving? This is the first I've heard about it. Mom didn't tell me why. All she said is that she found a better place. But I don't get why we're moving next week. Plus, my part-time job is closer to the address we have now, so I wish you had warned me before deciding. And did you say part-time job? I thought you had a full-time job. Doesn't matter. A job is a job. Doesn't matter. A job is a job. All right, we'll talk about this later. I still have some work to finish. Wait, what about my allowance? Scott, start saving your own money. But how about this? I'll treat you to dinner. Really? Thanks. It's been ages since I've eaten out. Don't get too excited. We're just going to the family restaurant down the street. And in return, you'll tell me everything about your new job and this sudden move.
I thought you had a full-time job. Doesn't matter. A job is a job. Doesn't matter. A job is a job. All right, we'll talk about this later. I still have some work to finish. Wait, what about my allowance? Scott, start saving your own money. But how about this? I'll treat you to dinner. Really? Thanks. It's been ages since I've eaten out. Don't get too excited. We're just going to the family restaurant down the street. And in return, you'll tell me everything about your new job and this sudden move. One week later. Carol, we've moved out without you. What are you talking about? We don't see the point in living with someone who doesn't earn much. So, we've moved out. If you want to live with us, you'll have to double your income. Otherwise, we don't need you. If you don't want to end up homeless, you'll have to work harder. But that might be difficult for someone who didn't even go to college. Are you serious? You moved out because I don't earn enough? And now you're telling me to double my income? Is money all that matters to you? There's nothing wrong with me. You just don't earn enough. If you want to know our new address, you'll have to increase your salary. Even if that means finding a new job or a rich husband. Are you threatening me? I'm dead serious. Scott's got a new job now and he'll be earning more than you. We don't need your measly salary anymore. But if you manage to earn as much as he does, we might consider letting you live with us. Mom, I'm not desperate to live with you guys. I like my job and I'm content with my salary. I won't do as you say. Fine then. But are you sure about this? Without a place to live, how will you continue working? You'll lose your family, your home, and it's a chance to find a better job. Just because you think you're better than us. Do you even hear yourself? You're threatening to make me homeless, just so I can bring home more money. Say whatever you like about my methods. I'm saying all of this for your sake. You should be making more money at your age. And after everything I've done for you, I deserve it. Have you gotten that I give birth to you, raised you, and fed you? I'm just disciplining you. So you'll learn to feel gratitude for the things people have done for you. Gratitude? Are you lecturing me about gratitude? The same person who said she'd never thank me for all the work I've done and the money I've put into this house? I've always been grateful for you raising me. But you don't understand why I feel belittled. I've done my best up until now. And I can find any reason why I should be treated like this. You think I'd be satisfied with the salary you're bringing in? You only earn $2,000 a month. And what's wrong with me praising Scott? It's the truth. Scott's going to be earning much more than that pathetic little salary of yours. We've all decided to move on without you. If you want to live with us again, you'll have to earn double. That's how you can pay me back for raising you up until now. Pay you back? Wow, I should have done this much sooner. But I'll be moving out too. Feel free to do whatever you like. I don't care what you do. It doesn't mean anything to me because I still have Scott. Yeah, get for you. You don't have to tell me where you live. And I think it's sad that you wanted to disown me. That sounds great to me. 
I don't want to have anything to do with you either. I'm going to finally live for myself from now on. That sounds great to me. You would never be good enough for this family. Anyway, I'm glad we could finally get rid of the weight like you. I've had enough of listening to what you say. Listening to you made me lose out on going to college and maybe waste ten years of my life trying to please you. I can't live with you anymore. What? What's the matter with you? You're going to be homeless and all alone. You can't honestly be happy about all that. What? Homeless? You really don't understand, do you? It's unfortunate, but your lack of interest in me is to blame. I'm actually relieved because I can finally free myself from the toxic relationship I've had with you. This is the happiest I've ever been. I'm going to be free of your manipulation. I'll find a new place to live and I won't share the address with you. From now on, we'll lead completely separate lives. Goodbye. Many months later. Carol, why won't you answer the phone? Hurry up and pick up the phone. I've been trying to call you since yesterday afternoon. You can't ignore me forever. I'm your mother. Answer the phone right now. Mother? I'm sorry. I think you have the wrong number. I don't have a mother. What are you talking about? Don't be silly. I'm your mother. Don't joke around. I need to talk to you about something serious. Oh, well, I think I used to have one, but unfortunately, we caught ties last month and decided we wouldn't bother each other ever again. So who are you? I'm not interested in talking to anyone who calls themselves my mother. I think I remember we had a fight like that. But you didn't actually take it seriously, did you? I didn't mean any of that. It's all in the past. Let's forget that silly fight and make up. I want us to get on from now on. For me, having a mother is a thing of the past. Even when Isel called her my mom, she didn't act like one. Don't joke about things like that. I'm being serious. I have something to ask you. We're in a lot of trouble and you've got to help us, so listen to me properly. And I'm telling you that I have no obligation to do anything. You have to say we're not family anymore. You're the one. The one that said I was just a weight, that you had no use? For me anymore. So, what made you change your mind? We haven't been able to pay the rent for our new home, and we might be getting kicked out the next month if we don't pay up. You've gotta help us. I don't understand what's going on, but it looks like we need you after all. I'll let you know what our address is, so come quickly. Please forget about that stupid fight we had, and come live with us. You say that, but what do you want from me? I don't see how I can help you. I thought I'd already made it clear before we cut ties that have done more than enough for this family. You chose to ignore that and didn't think you had any reason to feel any gratitude for the things I did, so I chose to start over. I'm not surprised about the situation you're in now. To put things simply, Dad wasn't bringing any money home. So it's only a matter of course that you wouldn't pay the rent. What are you talking about? Your dad's still working? He should be earning more than enough. Just because you cut ties with us doesn't mean you can be so rude towards your father. Besides, that's impossible. It seems that you thought the money he was earning was available for us to use on the bills and stuff. But that's a mistake. 
he was using all that money to pay off the debt he owed. So he hasn't paid for anything these past 10 years. He hasn't put any money to pay the loans for the house. And he hasn't had any money to spare to even pay the bills. He couldn't afford to pay the mortgage, so he had to rewrite the contract for the house years ago. It was in my name when you all moved out. So I decided on the salad since I didn't want to live there anymore either. What? That old house was in your name? That's not possible. Wait a minute. I need some time to process this. No. What you're talking about. That doesn't make any sense. Why would he put the house in your name? You still don't understand? That wasn't earning as much as you like to think he was. He was earning much less than me and had to use all of his salary and paying back the debt he owes. I think that the situation you're faced with right now is more than enough proof that his salary can cover the rent, bills, and money you need for groceries. Don't you understand how useful my pathetic salary was? I don't know what you're talking about. He should have already finished paying off the debt he owed years ago. Why is he still paying it off? What you're saying still doesn't make any sense. Do you think you already finished paying it off? No way. That's going to be impossible. Do you even know how much he owes? It's an amount big enough that he won't be able to pay it off by the time he retires. No matter how much he worked overtime. Even if he earned the same as I did, it would still be difficult for him to clear it all up. What? Plus, you were saying that you moved because Scott got a job, right? I understand that you wanted to start a new life and a new home without me but you really should have thought about it first. Or did you really think that I would cling to you and beg for you to let me in and that you'd get me to find a job where I could earn twice the amount I do right now? Please, Brenda, let me come live with you. I don't want to be alone. I'll work harder and do everything you say. Is that the reaction you thought you'd get? You must be kidding. You are the one that thinks too much of herself. If you think that you can use your own daughter that much and expect her to be your slave forever, of course not. It took me a while, but I finally realized that there is nothing I can do to make you happy or love me as much as you love Scott. So I've given up on trying to get on with someone as toxic as you. You're nothing to me. I can't believe you'd say that. You're a horrible daughter. I did all of this for your sake too, you know. So that you would finally realize that you should work harder for your parents' sake. But Scott's my baby boy. He's going to be the one to take care of us when we're old. So I realized that we had no use for a grown daughter who wasn't even earning that much and wasn't even married yet. I just wanted to chase you out of the house before you cause any more trouble for us. You are just a waste of space. And I felt it was the best time to move since Scott would be getting his first pay this month. I'm tired of you playing the victim, Brenda. Anyway, I'm saying that you shouldn't have decided to move us fast before even knowing how much Scott would be earning. Do you even know where he works in the hours? He barely works 20 hours a week. It's a part-time job at a convenience store. If he was by himself, he could probably get by. Is that true? Is he only working part-time? Why do you even know that? Why would he tell you when he didn't even tell me? He told me he's working for a major corporation. A really big business. He didn't say anything about the convenience store. He didn't say anything about how many hours he was working either. 
well, guess he wasn't lying. It's a convenience store that he has stores all over the country. So it's true that it's a major business. But he obviously lied to you because he wants to meet the stupidly high expectation that you have of him so that you wouldn't judge him as you judge me. And because he wants to impress everyone. But I'm surprised he would actually move before confirming how much he was paid. You didn't even wait for his first paycheck. Before you decide you clearly aren't looking reality in the face, Brenda. You conveniently choose to ignore all the stuff I've done for you. But you believe that Scott must be doing much better than I am because he's your baby boy. Why does it matter whether it's part-time or not? I never knew you looked down on other people's jobs like that. You should be ashamed of yourself. It doesn't matter. As long as he's earning enough. Six hundred dollars. That's all he earns in a month. Like I said, if he was living alone in a super cheap apartment, maybe that would be enough. But I don't think it's enough to support the three of you. Especially if you can't rely on Dad's paycheck. You're joking? That's all he earns? I thought he was going to get a lot more. You called my $2,000 salary pathetic. What would you call Scott? $600. What's the saying? Oh, I know. Don't count your chickens before they hatch. I hope you finally understand how much I've done for this family. There's no way you'll make any of the payments this month or the next month without me anyway. I doubt Scott will be as generous as I was. He's more likely to keep all the money he makes for himself because he's grown into an adult without everyone around him doing everything for him. I can't believe this. Why didn't you tell me we moved all this way for nothing? I guess we have no choice but to move back into the old house at the very least. We won't have to pay rent there. So will you give it back to us? I already told you. I sold it. You did what? I didn't give my permission for you to do that. I told you I was paying the mortgage. So Dad thought it was only right that the contracts be rewritten in my name. I'm the owner of that house. Well, until I sold it. Which I had every right to do. Because you all moved out and I didn't want to live there anymore. And I'm warning you. You can't use any of the spare keys. You still have to get in because the locks were changed when I sold it. It's already been sold, and it's already someone else's property. If you try to get in, it'll be considered trespassing, and you'll be arrested. I can't believe you. How could you sell the house while we're gone? What's wrong with you? Wait, is that why your dad was so worried? He was shocked when I told him you weren't coming with us too. What was that all, because he knew he couldn't afford to pay anything? I thought it was strange that he kept asking me where you were and why you weren't coming with us. But this must be why. Then what did you do? What did I do about what? You were saying that you were going to move? Where are you living now? You sold the house, so you must have gotten a lot of money from that too. Where did you move? I'm living in a penthouse apartment closer to my job. You're what? For the past ten years, you've been looking down on my job. But I think I deserve a little more respect. I don't know what you consider worthy of respect. But at the very least, I've got my own office. And I've been entrusted with managing several major projects, so earned relatively a lot. Despite everything you say about me, being in fear, to Scott, and not earning enough money. 
I realized that I deserved to spend my own money for myself. So I moved closer to the city center, to an apartment that has a great view of the skyline. So I moved closer to the city center, to an apartment that has a great view of the skyline. Can't be serious. We're about to be kicked out of our house and we can't even afford to find another place. But you're living in a penthouse apartment. That doesn't make any sense. If you've got the money to buy that place after you sold the house, then we deserve to live there, too. No way that's not happening. You asked for this. You're the one who planned to move out while I was away in the business trip. And said that she wanted to disown me. Carol, don't be like that. You'll forgive me, won't you? I was so stupid, but I'm your mother after all. Let's forgive and forget. I just didn't understand you and didn't try to talk to you enough. I never knew how much you were helping us. But I do now. So can we go back to the way things were and help each other again? No way. Oh my god, this is hilarious. Just how convenient do you think I am? Carol, just think about it for a minute. You don't have to say no that quickly. We're going to be kicked out of the house. You've got to help us. Why should I? You were laughing about how I wouldn't have a home to come back to when I got back from my business trip. You didn't even tell me you were planning on moving. And now that you know the truth about who has the money, you're begging me to let you live with me. I don't even want to tell you my address. I don't want you coming anywhere near me. Are you serious? Even though I'm your mother? Like I said, I don't have a mother. We already cut ties, remember? You're a stranger to me now, and I don't want anything to have to do with you. But if you pay me back all the money I've put into paying the mortgage and the bills in the past ten years, I might think about letting you know where I'm living right now. Well, I think that's going to be impossible. So goodbye. In the end, I made the decision to block my mother's contact and ignore any messages from my family. As a result, they soon faced the repercussions of their actions as karma caught up with them. They were ultimately forced to leave the new house they had purchased using the money they had taken from me. Within weeks of moving in, they found themselves without a place to stay, no friends to rely on, and no savings to fall back on. My father, who had never stood up for me, expressed his anger towards my mother for the mistreatment I endured. He compelled her to find employment and contribute to the rent of a small apartment, which he eventually secured in a dilapidated neighborhood. Additionally, he prohibited her from returning home until she obtained a full-time position, something she had never done before. Scott, the brother who had always been her favorite, was swiftly cast aside as soon as he received his first paycheck and never showed any remorse. It seemed that he had lost interest in taking care of their mother. Despite the excessive praise and favoritism he received over me, our mother can only blame herself for failing to treat her own adult children with respect. Helen, when will you be getting home? It's already 6 p.m., you know? Ah, uh, I'm sorry. My meaning lasted a little longer than I expected. I'm just about to get on the train home. Huh? You've been coming home later and later these days. My boy Eric has been sitting here waiting with a growling stomach. Do you intend to make my son starve? I'm sure that you're more than capable of sneaking out of meeting at work. Please make more of an effort, young lady. Your husband's dinner is far more important than your meetings anyway. No, this was an important meeting about one of our collaboration products with another company. I'm in a position of responsibility on this project, 
so there's no way I can leave before the end of a meeting. Stop making excuses. To focus single-mindedly on work while abandoning your essential duties as a wife, such as looking after your husband, is simply not acceptable. My son has no need for such a sloth of a wife. He'll divorce you, I say, divorce. Looking after him? Oh, come on. Eric's a fully grown man, not a baby. Plus, he's unemployed right now and spends all of his time at home. Do not talk back to me, young lady. Sorry, it's gonna be a little while longer before I get home, though. So if he's really desperate for something to eat, you're more than welcome to use whatever's in the fridge. To make something to eat between yourselves. What? Do you seriously intend to make your mother-in-law into some cheap imitation kitchen maid? Have you no shame? I've never heard of such a cheek. I'll have him divorce you if you're not careful. No, I didn't mean that. I'm sorry. Just forget I said anything. We won't be waiting for you any longer. Eric's he's so hungry, he's going to pass out if he doesn't eat soon. We'll find a sushi restaurant or some place to eat out tonight. So we won't be needing any supper from the likes of you. Hold on a moment, Mom. I understand you're upset, but let's not jump to conclusions or make threats. It's not fair to bring divorce into the conversation. We can discuss this calmly. Calmly? How can I stay calm when you're proposing something so outrageous? Making your own mother-in-law work as a kitchen maid is disrespectful to say the least. I'm your family, not hired help. I apologize if it came across that way, Mom. It was never my intention to disrespect anyone. I was merely suggesting that you could lend a hand in the kitchen, not take on the role of a maid. I understand that family dynamics can be sensitive, and I didn't mean to offend you. Well, it certainly sounded like you were suggesting something demeaning. But let's put that aside for now. We need to focus on Eric's hunger. He's feeling really weak, and we can't afford to wait any longer. I understand the urgency, Mom, but as you can see, Eric is a grown man now, so he could of course handle his own meal. You shouldn't have to worry about him that much. Oh, trust me, Helen, I'm well aware that Eric is a grown man. But as his mother, it's only natural for me to be concerned about his well-being. I've been taking care of him since he was a baby, after all. Well, Mom, I think it's time to let go a little. Eric is perfectly capable of taking care of himself. He doesn't need to be coddled or worried over every minute of the day. Coddled? Worried over? Oh, please, Helen. It's called being a loving and caring mother. I'm not smothering him. I'm simply looking out for his best interests. And honestly, I would expect you as his spouse to understand and respect that. I do understand, Mom, but sometimes your concern can be a bit overbearing. Eric is an adult, and he deserves the freedom to make his own choices and decisions, even when it comes to something as simple as a meal. What the hell are you talking about? How dare you talk about your husband like that? It's your responsibility to take care of your husband, but now I'm doing it for you. Actually, you would certainly have to thank me for that, don't you think? Mom, we are adults. We could look after ourselves. Could you please stop intervening in our life? It's just inconvenient. Oh, good grief. You really are a failure of a wife. My son picked this short straw with you, didn't he? I'll have him divorce you before long. I am he mean it. Three hours later. Eric, are you there? You got a minute? What is it? I was just about to go to sleep. Besides, if you want to say something, why not just come and talk to me? Why do you need to send messages when we're in the same house? 
but if I come to speak to you, your mom will probably overhear us. Anyway, it's about your mother. Is there no way we can live separately? This arrangement with the three of us is just not working. What? For God's sake, you're not going on about my mom again, are you? To tell the truth, Eric, I'm extremely stressed. I agreed to have her live with us because I felt bad about her being lonely after your dad passed away. But she's causing me so much stress, it's unreal. Does she think I'm some kind of slave? She forces me to do all the housework despite the fact that I'm working long hours. Not only that, but she barely ever lifts a finger herself. If there's ever anything she doesn't like, even just a little bit. She immediately brings up divorce and threatens to make you end the marriage with me. What's more? Despite the fact she makes absolutely no money and contributes nothing to the household finances. She goes out to restaurants on lavish spending sprees, always bringing home bags of frivolous junk. There's no other way to put it, Eric. I've reached my limit and I can't take it anymore. What can I do? You can complain about her as much as you like. But she doesn't have anywhere else to go, she sold the family home when my dad died. We're the ones who took her in. I could hardly send her packing now, can I? The only money she has to her name is her pension, so when she says she can't afford to contribute, she's not lying. Plus, without my dad, she's super lonely. Surely, it wouldn't hurt to indulge her selfishness, just a little bit every now and then? This goes beyond the level of mere selfishness. She sneers and barks orders at me, tells me I'm not fit to eat in the same room as her, and forces me to eat nothing but leftovers. Demands that you, being the husband, must always be the first to use the bathtub, while she, being the all-important mother-in-law, uses it second. Then when my turn finally does come around. There are even times where she lets the water out before I can get in. For some strange reason, she constantly gives me midnight sermons on how a wife should act. So I can't even sleep half the time because of her incessant preaching. Since she moved in with us a year ago, I lost 10 kilograms from not eating properly due to all the stress. This is malicious bullying, plain and simple. It's a miracle I managed to tolerate her this long, and the only reason I did is because she's your mom. But I'm sick of being treated like I'm not even human. I've reached my limit. Please, Eric, have her move somewhere else. Maybe an apartment or a shared house or something, I don't know. Just anywhere but here. If that's impossible at least, at the very least, could you please tell her to stop treating me this way? If you don't do something, I'm going to lose it. Fine, sheesh woman, I get it. I'll mention it at some point if I remember. Anyway, more importantly, I need $300. What? $300? What are you going to use it for? Travel expenses. I'm looking for work right now so I need money for bus fares and trains and stuff. What? But I gave you money for travel expenses not that long ago. You get $150 a month for that already. That's a pocket change. I already use it all. Get the real woman, $150 just doesn't cover it. Give me $300. Wait, you're... No way. Are you visiting casinos again? What? Come on, it's not like it's a problem. I don't go very often and I hardly spend anything when I do. It's a way for me to let off steam after the hours I spent job hunting. You haven't forgotten that you lost your last job. Because you got caught sneaking out of the office and visiting casinos when you were supposed to be working, have you? You got on your knees and swore you'd never visit a casino again, Eric. You swore. In spite of that, 
You're at it again, and this time you're blowing the money that I give you on travel expenses on the slots. If that's where it's going, you'll never get another cent out of me. Oh, give it a rest, woman. You're like a broken record nag nag nag. It's up to me how I spend my time. Are you seeing a band from relaxing to take my mind off the stress of trying to find a job now? Who gave you the authority to do that? The only thing you're good for is bringing in money anyway. If you can't even toss me a few dollars when I'm in a pinch, then what the hell do you bring to the table? What? What does that mean? The only reason I have to work like a dog now is because you got fired for acting like a moron. Job hunting, give me a break. All you do is laze around on the sofa like a sack of potatoes. Then you have the nerve to spend the money I give you for getting around town on the slots. You have no right to be angry with me. Oh, just bottom it already. Nag, nag, nag. You think you're so much better than me just because you happen to have a job, don't you? Screw this. I'm going to sleep. No, you can't just get up and talk to me. I'm not finished, Eric. Eric. The next day. Excuse me, Helen. Answer me. What is it? I'm at work right now. I hear you've been complaining to Eric again. Giving him a hard time because he's struggling to find work. How dare you go whining to him behind my back. You really are a spiteful, underhanded cretin of a woman. What? One thing you don't seem to understand about my son is that he's recharging his batteries right now. He's simply depressed because things didn't work out at his last company. Any normal wife would be trying to make her husband feel better right now. But far from it, you're actually going on the attack. You're atrocious. You're a devil, I tell you, a devil. There's nothing for it but divorce. The fact that you're messaging me like this now must mean that Eric just woke up from his hibernation on the sofa and told you about the conversation I had yesterday, right? I bet he told you about what I had said about him finding a job and nothing else. Am I right? Ugh, I give up. Now, you listen to me and you listen well, young lady. You need to make more of an effort to stand up for your husband. You need to have his back. Just because you happen to have a job doesn't make you any better than him. Right, sure, I'm sorry. I'm occupied with work right now, so would you be kind enough to tell me off later instead? I'm busy. Good grief. Look at you. A fully grown woman bragging about having a job like it's some kind of special achievement. Tell me, Helen. What good is a woman who does nothing but work? Ugh, I'll never get any grandchildren with a daughter-in-law like you. How about you fulfill your feminine duties as a wife for a change? I must be the unluckiest, most mistreated mother-in-law in the whole world. Aren't you at least big enough to admit your wrongdoing and walk away with some dignity? Get a divorce. You're really annoying me now. Would you just shut up for once? What? How dare you? What has gotten into you today? Where did this rebellious attitude come from all of a sudden? Know your place, young lady. Who do you think the mistress of this household is? If you define me, I'll have my son divorce you. Okay, divorce it is. Huh? Have it your way, I'll divorce him. It's not like I particularly enjoy being married to an unemployed leech anyway. Nor do I take any great pleasure in having to live with his parasitic megalomaniac old hack of a mother. I'm tossing that egotistical, jobless dishabag in the gutter where he belongs. I'll divorce him then, let's do it. I'm ready. Wait. What's gotten into you, Helen? 
Is this some kind of joke? Are you being serious? You'd actually go through with it? You see, the thing is, you should have known that there was a limit to how much of your crap I was willing to tolerate. What? Did you think I was just gonna shut my mouth forever like an obedient little slave while you hurled abuse at me? Are you and Eric actually aware of your current positions? What good is a woman who does nothing but work, you ask? How about putting food on the table for you and your waste of a spaceman child of a son? Who do you think it is putting a roof over your heads? Who do you think it is who's looking after you and enabling your lazy deadbeat lifestyles? Go on, think about it. This one's really easy. Well? Oh my god. Helen. What's gotten into you? This isn't like you at all. It's not that something's gotten into me. It's that you think you can manipulate and take advantage of me and my kindness. Ask yourself, do you think I enjoy feeding, clothing, and providing shelter for a malicious, bullying old hag of a mother-in-law? The only reason I reluctantly agreed to you living here in the first place was due to my mercy and kindness. Because I felt bad about you living all on your own after your husband died, and this is how you repay me? By walking around like you own the place and treating me like your slave? Then you have the nerve to threaten me with divorce when you don't get your own way? Do you have any awareness of how arrogant and shameless your behavior is? Well? Are you going to answer me, you miserable, sponging witch? No, but, but I. Taking care of your mother-in-law is a decent thing to do. What? I'm not sure that common decency like that applies to sponging vagrants. You are also aware that I'm not your daughter, right? Even still, I wouldn't tolerate this from my own mom. So what do you think gives you the right? If you were actually my mom, I'd be just as eager to get you out of my life. Helen, wait. Helen, I may not be your mother, but surely this is still no way to talk to your mother-in-law. And what on earth is with all this coarse, vulgar language? You barbarian! It's just that I thought all along, you are simply not suitable to be my son's wife. It's divorce for you. Divorce. Get out. I already told you I'm divorcing him. However, the only ones who need to get out are you two. What? Why? Ah, seems like you might have forgotten this minor detail. But the place you are currently living in rent-free, like the pair of grotesque parasitic termites you are, is the apartment I bought back when I was single. It's my name on the deed, and it's my apartment. What? Really? No way, you actually forgot? I did tell you before. Remember? It was the day you moved in. I gave you a thorough explanation about all the details regarding the living situation. Aren't you a little too young to be going senile? Well, now that you mention it, I think I might remember you telling me something along those lines. But, you can hardly expect me to remember every conversation we had last year. The thing is, whether you remember or not makes zero difference to me. Once the divorce is finalized, you and the Sloth King will be packing your things and leaving for good. Because, as I told you, you're living in M.Y. apartment. You'll no longer be my mother-in-law and he'll no longer be my husband. And sadly for you, I'm not the kind of person to let a pair of strangers live like bums in my house. Now, I'll be handing Eric the divorce papers when I get home today. Make sure the two of you get your belongings together, okay? Luckily for you, in my infinite generosity and benevolence, I'm willing to give you until tomorrow evening to get out. Don't think you'll be getting anything to eat, though. Helen, just wait. Surely you're not going to divorce him immediately, today? You don't actually plan on kicking your husband and mother-in-law on the streets, 
Do you? I simply do not agree. This divorce isn't happening. I won't allow it. What the? Why have you done a complete 180 all of a sudden? You seem to be happy enough to walk all over me when you thought you could get away with it. You waved around the notion of a divorce like it was your prized family crest, using it as a pretext to say whatever you wanted, whenever you wanted. Then the moment you realize things are no longer going in your favor, you're suddenly opposed to it? Don't make me laugh. What? You're the one who started all this in the first place. You wanted to fight, didn't you? All I did was give you what you wanted. You should be grateful. Don't you dare start trying to worm your way out of it all of a sudden. And I won't allow it? Ah, uh, who do you think you are? Since when were you the queen? Did I miss your coronation? How about you try cultivating some awareness of your own position for once and putting a lid on that monstrous mouth of yours? I'm so sorry. This is all my fault. It's too late to apologize now. I'm dead set on divorce and nothing can change my mind. Make sure you're gone by tomorrow night. And let me make one thing abundantly clear. There will be no distribution of assets. Eric, the eternal NET, has no savings of his own and we have no shared accounts either. There's no money for him to receive, not a single cent, so don't bother trying to put in any claims. I would feel bad about throwing you out into the streets without any clothes. So I'll allow you to take the bare minimum of clothing and everyday necessities with you. I take it you have no complaints about that? If I've made myself clear, hurry up and get out of my apartment. And take your good-for-nothing son with you. Oh my god. Please, please, just wait. Wait. We don't have anywhere to live. We sold the family home and my husband passed. My pension doesn't amount to much either. Eric doesn't even have a job. Please. Oh, I see. Just so I understand, you'll be in dire straits because your sons are in ET and you have no place to stay and no money, is that right? Okay, so what? Huh? That's not my problem. The fact that your sons are neat or that you have nowhere to stay or that you have no money. Yeah, none of these things are my fault. If you're struggling for money, you could always have Eric earn you back both a living on the slots. And why can't you find a job? If you've got the energy to bully your daughter-in-law 24-7, then holding down a job shouldn't be a problem. I saw a local supermarket was recruiting the other day. Do that? Oh my God. God's not going to help you now. Nor is playing the victim, and I mean please, is this really any way for a fully grown woman to behave? If you don't have any money, then you work. Surely you at least understand that? You're not a child. Why? Why are you doing this? I think you know full well why. Because you defied the mistress of this household. When I got home from work that evening, I was met at the door by Eric and his mother-in-law on their knees. They begged and pleaded in unison, we're sorry for the way we behaved. But I shook them off and said, if you've got time to be groveling on the floor, you've got time to get your things together. For the first time in what felt like forever, I made some food just for myself, and was able to take a bath at a leisurely pace when I felt like it for a change. Then I retired to my bedroom, locked the door, put in some earplugs, and slept like a baby. The next day, the pair of them were desperately trying to butter me up by dashing around the house making breakfast and cleaning up. Then they got back on their knees and begged me once again, please rethink the divorce. I swear I'll never set foot in a casino again. 
My response was to hand them the divorce papers and some bags full of their stuff. After which I threatened to take them to court if they didn't sign the papers and get out by the end of the day. Eric panicked, reluctantly signed the papers and left, taking his mother-in-law with him. With that, I was officially freed of the termite infestation plaguing my house before the day was up. I was so happy about being freed from my in-law-induced slavery that I raised a toast and celebrated in lavish style. The pair of them moved into a scruffy 70-year-old apartment, which they somehow paid the rent on by scraping together what was left of Eric's mom's pension and social security money. Apparently, Eric finally started looking for work in earnest, and his mom got a part-time job at the supermarket. However, Eric's efforts didn't amount to anything, and he was constantly chided by his mom. Why are you forcing your aged mother to work? They got into thunderous shouty matches every day, and the neighbors at their wit's end started phoning in complaints. As things stand, it looks like they're on the verge of being kicked out. Again. They really are a pair of morons.